All right, here are solutions for perfect problem four uh, from Matthew 11. Uh, the idea here, it's a little puzzle called, I think it's called a skyscraper puzzle. And you can sort of picture this as a city block and you got, you know, streets and avenues and you have these buildings here. So there are 16 buildings here. Each of these squares represents a building. And what I'm going to do is figure out how tall the buildings are. These buildings seem to be one story, two story, three stories, or four stories high. But I need to use a one, two, three, and a four in every row and every column. And furthermore, these numbers on the outside tell me how many buildings I would see from that perspective. So for example, this four right here gives me a lot of information. The only possible way I could see four buildings is if there was a one there, a two there, a three there, and a four there. That's the only way you can see four buildings is you need the buildings to get progressively taller as they get further away from you. Because if that ever doesn't happen, if you ever have a taller building in front of a shorter building, you won't see that shorter building. So anytime I see a four, I can automatically put down that ordering, which helps me a lot. Um, the other number that gives me a lot of information is a one. If you see a one, that must mean that you have the tallest building directly in front of you. So there must be a four right there, there must be a four right there, and we already got this four right here. And so what about the rest of these numbers? Well, using the fact that there must be a four in every row and every column, what I can do is say, well, here's a column, there's gotta be a four somewhere, and I already used up the four in this row, and in this row, and in this row, so this right here must be a four. Okay, what about the rest of the information? Well, uh, from, you got a couple options. Do is look for the threes. They give you a lot of information. So this three right here, for example, um, I have a one and a two left over that have to go in this column somewhere. Uh, this four is blocking the three. So, so far I'm only seeing this building. So I have my one and my two left. I'd have to put my one here and my two here. Because if I put my two here and my one here, my two would block my one and I wouldn't see enough buildings. So that kind of gets me this layout here. Uh, where can I go from here? It is I looked at this three here. So note that what I have left in this row is a two and a three, right? I used up the one and the four. So that means there must either be a two or a three right here. But if there's a three right here, then I won't see the one and the two buildings behind it. There's no way I can get three here. So this cannot be a three. This has to be a two. Therefore, this must be my three here. Uh, and furthermore, now I got a three and a four and a one here. So this must be a two. And now let's see, I've used all my twos. Uh, I've used all my fours. All I have left are ones and threes. So I must have a one and a three here and here and a one and a three here and here. If I put my one right here, I'll see too many buildings. I'd have a one, two, three, four but I'm only supposed to see two buildings. So this must be a three here. Therefore, that must be a one, in which case this must be a three, and this must be a one right there. Uh, so kind of a process of elimination idea, I guess, as you go through. There's the first puzzle. The second one is very similar, except now you're given a lot less information and you got more buildings. But again, we're gonna start with the ones and the five. So the five tells us this must be one, two, three, four, five. And these ones tell me there must be a five here and a five here. And now what I'm gonna do is look at the fours. So in the case of a four, uh, I like to think about where the five building must be. The five building can't be kind of in the forefront here because once I get the five, I can't see anything behind it. So if I have a five too early, I'm in trouble. In fact, the five has to be in one of the back two spots in order for me to see four buildings. Five can't be right here because I've already used a five in that column. So there must be a five right here. Now I got a five, a five, a five, a five. It looks like my last five must go right here. Uh, and then I can use that same logic to figure out where other buildings go. This column right here and think about where my four goes. If I put my four back here, I'm gonna see too many buildings. If I put my four even right here, I'll see the building in front of it, the four and the five. So the four is gonna have to go right here. Uh, so all that leaves me with in this one is a one and a two. Uh, at this point, I don't think I can differentiate where the one goes and where the two goes in this column, uh, but I bet I can somewhere else. I can look at this row right here and think about where my four must go. Can't go here because I already got a five here. Can't go here and here because I already got fours in those columns. So either my four is the first building or this one out here. Well, if it's the first building, I ain't gonna see any other buildings except for the five. So it can't possibly be here. Therefore, it must be here. And now I got a four, a four, a four. That only leaves me with two more fours. Uh, one must be here. So in the bottom two rows, I have fours kind of on the edges here. Uh, so I can put a four. Well, how about this? There has to be a four in this column. 
and it must be in one of these two spots right here. If it's here, I'll see the building in front of it, the four and the five. That's bad, I'm only supposed to see two. So that four must go right here. And therefore, I must have a four right here in order to have a four in every row and in every column. About threes, in this row there must be a three, it can't go right here. So there's either a three here or here. If I put the three in front, it's gonna block these two buildings. I only see three buildings, that's bad. I'm supposed to see four. Three must go right here. And that leaves me with a one and a two in these two spots. I don't think at this point I know where they go. I can consider this top row. If there's a three right here, the only three buildings I'm seeing are the three, the four, and the five. So three can't go here. It must go either here or here. Can't go here because I already got a three in that column, so it must go right here. So now I got a three, a three, and a three. There has to be a three. I have these two spots and these two spots, and two of those four must get a three. But it can't go here because there's already a four there. So in this column, the three must go right here, and therefore I must have the other three right here. And this must be a one because it's the only number left in this column. And in this row, this must be a two. It's the only number left in that row. In this column, I must get a one here because it's the only number left in that column. In this row, I must get a two right here. In this column, I must get a one here two here, and a one here, and a two here. And go through and check that you have one, two, three, four, five in every row, and in every column. And then finally, you can check the perspectives. I should only see one building, I do this guy. I should see two buildings, I do the four and the five. I should see five buildings, one, two, three, four, five, good. I should see one building, yep, the five. I should see two buildings, yep, the four and the five. I should see four buildings, the two, the three, the four, and the five, good. I should see four buildings, the one, the two, the four, and the five, awesome. It looks like this checks all the criteria. I didn't mess anything up, uh, so I'll end this video here.